Well, not long ago, I think I was that youth, so just a comment on that. Um, but thank you all um, for allowing me to be a part of the agenda today. Um, you probably think, you know, what does healthcare have to do with this? And maybe that could have been my 10 minutes tonight, but I'm actually going to talk about something that is a little bit more timely, something that we actually launched just this last week. But before that, um, I'd like to introduce also Nikki Milgram is one of our staffers at the Ecology Center sitting in the back here, um, who helped with the local food summit um, just a week ago as well. So, and also, I guess to back up too, our organization has been in this community for almost 50 years, um, the Ecology Center, and you also might know it as um, Recycle Ann Arbor. Um, we're actually the parent organization of Recycle Ann Arbor. So um, I'm going to change gears just a little bit. I don't want to just talk about healthcare, um, but I also want to talk about state level work. Um, and the connection that Yusuf, I think, made for all of you earlier was that there's something called the Michigan Good Food Charter. That charter was created in 2010, but work started well before that time. But the thing to know about the Good Food Charter is that it's a vision for Michigan. And there's many other states, I think, that would like to have a vision such as this one in their state. So in 2010, a number of stakeholder groups came together to agree on this vision, but also created a number of work groups. Those work groups actually include youth, good food access, farm and farmers, um, infrastructure, so that's how our food moves around the state, maybe processors are as well included in that, and then another group um, for institutions. So that's what I'll be talking about more tonight. I also wanted to provide you with a little bit of statistics. Um, not all of us know what's happening across the state, but these are some high-level ones. Um, in 2012, um, Michigan State University did a survey with Michigan vegetable farmers. Half of them are interested in selling to this market. So we see as a new market opportunity for them, maybe one they haven't considered before, or an expansion for them, a way to grow and sell to a new market. Also, we know, and thanks to other speakers tonight, that there's interest by our schools in purchasing local foods. And then lastly, our work has been taking place in the healthcare sector for almost five years across the state, and we have more than 100 hospitals committed to buying 20% of their food by 2020 from Michigan Resources. So what is this network? Um, I think for most of you, um, it's a way to plug in, to share and to learn from one another if you want to continue conversations after tonight. I think it's also a way to align yourself with what's happening in our state. So we have this goal of 20% of Michigan foods to institutions by 2020. I also think it's important to note the supply side of this work. What can we do for farmers and food businesses? How can they profitably supply this um, food chain and this goal that we want to achieve? This is an extremely long link at the bottom of the page, but I wanted to give it to you as an option to find out more about the network. And I did leave some sign-up sheets at the entrance if you want more information. But together, we wanted to break this down. What do we need to do to achieve this goal? We want farmers and food suppliers to actually be able to get their food in to those institutions. The example talking about chart wells with Ann Arbor Public Schools, that didn't happen overnight. There's a lot of um, logistics and barriers that we have to overcome to make it a successful operation. Institutions actually have to know where their food comes from. Um, we've been disconnected for so long about where that food comes from and finding those connections and establishing those relationships Knowing your farmer and knowing your food is highly important. And then lastly, for all of you, eaters, that you identify these foods when, you, when your kids go to school, maybe you're visiting a loved one, or unfortunately you, you find yourself in a hospital bed. We want you to have the healthiest, the goodest food for your body. So other ways to engage in this work. Um, we actually created subcommittees. So maybe you're an advocate, someone who wants to join our outreach and engagement subcommittee and actually advocate for these changes in our institutions. Maybe you're someone who has already worked with your local school system and knows how to make this work happen. That's our tech ed, we call them, the technical assistance and education team. And then we have researchers. Um, it was nice to see the presentations by U of M students. Um, we know there's a lot to learn still, um, and we're asking you to plug into our research and impacts team as well. And if you're just 
interested in more information, Allison Oslin is another um, one of our staffers at Ecology Center who can help you find your way. And then you're thinking, oh my gosh, she's introducing something else to me. But we felt that there needed to be a public side to this work. Maybe you don't have extra time to dedicate to the network, but this might be a way for you to plug in. Maybe a recommendation to your local school or your hospital um, or another facility that you interact with. But we're asking institutions to recommit to this 20% by 2020 goal under this branded campaign called Cultivate Michigan. We want them to join by supplying and sourcing these foods, selling them, tracking these products, and then to promote it. I think we have to applaud the work um, that they've done over time and know that these challenges are difficult to overcome. There is a website if you'd like to visit it. It just opened last week, so bear with us with some kinks. But I want to point out overall that this is a place for news, um, events, resources, spotlights. We want to share your story. So if you have one to share, definitely get in touch with us. You can also see on this webpage who's already joined. And then lastly, in the little bubble there on the right-hand side, we will be tracking um, how many institutions are engaged in this work as well as the economic impact. And I think Yusuf mentioned that earlier, but we want to actually quantify how much our Michigan institutions are spending on Michigan foods. So hopefully over time you'll see and be able to watch that campaign grow. This is the campaign for the institutions. In case there's some in the room, we did want to show you that this is what we're asking of you. We're asking you to quantify those purchases, but not just to do that for our sake, but to do it for yours. So we're providing this tool as a resource for institutions to track their purchases over time. They might want to start by just high level numbers or they might want to break them down. So it really is a tool for their food service operations to set goals and to achieve them. We've created um, more useful tools for them. Um, this is a product guide. We felt that some institutions weren't able to tackle this um, easily. So we're focused on these pieces called product promotions. So if there are farmers in the room, these are the products you might want to consider growing this year or selling to institutions. We see it as an easy way to get your foot in the door. Asparagus is the first product. And then we'll be focused on blueberries, tomatoes, and apples. Some pretty low-hanging fruit. Again, no pun intended. Um, there's procurement resources. Recipes are always important to this work um, that have been tested by institutions. And then promotional pieces. Again, we want eaters to be able to see these foods wherever they go. We also are trying to do a plug for Michigan Market Maker. Again, if you're a food business, um, a buyer, or a producer, we highly recommend you creating a profile on Michigan Market Maker. And this is really matchmaker.com, if you will, for the food world. <laughs> so check that out. As I mentioned, there's some promotional pieces that we have. Um, for schools, this is a great one, the asparagus poster. It has a lot of fun tips and facts on it. We have stickers, we have window decals, um, all of that. So if you are interested in getting involved or want these resources, we have them available. So that was the state strategy. And just the recap here, you can see we're talking about economic impact, but we are talking about people. How many meals are served annually? We're talking about product promotions and these conversations about bringing all of the supply chain partners together in order to achieve what we want, which is the 20% by 2020 goal. But we know that there's going to be a lot of opportunity for innovation. So we want you to join the conversation. But before I leave you, I thought I'd share a little bit about what I know in our backyard. Um, I do know that the University of Michigan Health System offers a produce cart on campus and has also been working hard to get more local food into their cafeteria and on their patient menus. This is one of the signs that they put in the cafeteria. So if you haven't been there, they're working hard too. St. Joe's, I might have saw a couple colleagues in the audience. I want to do a shout out there. Um, our friends over at St. Joe's have been working hard. I believe they have almost 20 acres under production. Um, here you can see one of the hoop houses is handicap accessible. That's a partnership with the Eisenhower Center, so working on patient rehabilitation. Um, they have two other hoop houses and they bring that product into the hospital cafeteria as well as host um, a weekly farm stand. 
Um, and then talking with the other speakers or panelists, I realized that um, the Washtenaw Food Hub didn't come up. And they've been a great partner of mine. Um, and thinking about how we move this food is highly important. Um, I know Kim Bayer's here in the audience, and I hope there's maybe other representatives from the Food Hub. But we can't do it without having this regional food distribution in our community. So I just wanted to do a shout out for them as well. Um, and so no matter where you come from or who you are, I, I recommend visiting cultivatemichigan.org. Um, and I look forward to speaking with many of you afterwards. Thank you.